Hello Architects and welcome back to another RPG Architect tutorial. My name is Bert and today we're going to be going over importing 3D models into your project. So whether it be an entity or a doodad or if you're going to use a 3D model as a map, this will help you get started there. So the first thing you need to make sure you do is you have your assets in your content folder. So if you don't know, you go to this little folder up here. It opens up the directory where your project is. Go to content. And you can really, you can put it wherever you want, but there is a folder pre-made called models. And you can see in here, I already have a few examples. Just drag and drop your um, your 3D objects in here. These are .gltf files, I believe is the format. Yep, .gltf. Um, that is the format supported by RPGA. So just uh, take your files, drag them into that folder, and then you can come back over to your database. We're gonna start off with a doodad. Go to full screen here, and we're gonna call this one tree. You can set a category for your doodads. Uh, we, I think we went over that in the official doodad tutorial, but just for organization purposes, you can do that. We don't have to do that today. You want to go to appearance sprite slash model, click the three dots, and then we are in our models folder uh, over here, and I'm just going to select tree.gltf, and then here we go. So you can, you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. If you click and hold the middle button, you can kind of pan around the model, uh, and you can obviously you can resize it, you can do translation, um, we're just going to hit OK. Now, one thing when using them as doodads, uh, as it stands right now, you will have to set up a 2D visual. Um, and the visual is just for how it displays on the map here on your in your editor. So just for right now, um, we have to set up visual as a 2D uh, sprite. So I'm just going to use something here from Final Boss Blues. Let's just do 32. I'll just use this this tree here. That's fine. That is just, again, that is just a representation for your editor. That is not how it will actually appear. So the shape doesn't matter since it is a 3D model. You don't have to change this at all. It's fine. You can set up a custom collider or you can use the default collider. And if I uncheck that, then you can change the collider however you want. Or you can set it to ignore collision. You can set your light. All these other settings are pretty standard to uh, most other applications. So I just hit OK. Go to doodad mode, little rock, go to tree, select this tree, and then I can just draw in a few as I want. And then I'm going to hit play. And look, oh, okay, yep, they are big trees. I probably should scale them down a little bit, but there we go. We got some 3D tree models going on here. They are very big, but yeah. There you go, very easy. So let me do real quick, let's just go ahead and scale it down. Let's cut those down to like 0.5. So I go back to my, I go back to my doodad, hit the three dots, and let's just change the scale to 0.5. Let's cut them all down in half. That should be better. Okay, uh, another, application of 3d models is of course entities so we're going to set up a new entity here i'll put it right here next to this house because what i want to do is create like a water wheel so we have a water wheel model so i'm going to come up here sprite slash model select water wheel and i'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see it and here is our model now this model actually is animated. So the trees didn't have this, but you will see under over here on the right under model, there's animation. And if you click it, we have water wheel spin. Now I believe I, okay, so I'm not a 3D model guy, but I believe this is baked into it through Blender or, or whatever modeling software was used. I, I'm pretty sure it was Blender, but I, I think these come from when you're initially modeling it, but you click it, and you can see the animation right there, okay? And then of course, you know, if you wanna change the color, it can do 0 0.5, you can hue shift it, but we're just gonna leave it standard, that's fine. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one down in half in size also, cause I think this one is pretty big too. So let's do that, hit okay. 
and I don't have to put any scripting on here if I don't, you know, this is just a decoration, this is just a water wheel. You can set the direction here, of course, I think, uh, I think I actually want this to be east. You know, you can adjust your settings here as you need. The speed setting will not affect your animation. Again, that was built in or baked into the 3D object itself, so this does not seem to affect the uh, 3D model, okay? Unless it was a character walking around, I believe that still would affect it then. But as far as the spinning of the wheel, that's not gonna be the case, okay? Uh, everything else we can just leave. We could set a collider. Let's do a box. Um, let's do two, two, that's fine. Okay. And drag it over. Trees are much better size. Still maybe a little bit big, but those that's fine. You know, you get a bunch of them going, that's fine. But let's look at our water wheel. Look at that. Okay, it's I jammed it into the wall. I didn't make it small enough, that's okay. But you can see it is here, it is spinning. It probably should be a little lower to if, if there was actually water here <laughs> to actually be effective. But yeah, and now I'm caught on the collision right here. So yeah, just fine tuning, you know, what you would need your collision to be and stuff. Just just basic stuff. Okay. Now there's just one more thing I wanted to go over. I'll just show it as a new entity here. I'll just do that. Um, let's go into sprite model. If you had something like a map. So we're going to go to this Alice room combined. And I need to shrink it down because it's a big... So I'm going to go to point 0.1, whoops, point 0.1. Here we have a map from Xenogears, okay? This is Alice's room. You could import this, however, you would have to set up collision for the walls and the ground, as it stands right now. Uh, but Locke is working on getting something set up to do that for you, to where you could just import a model like this, and you would, it would know the ground, it would know what the walls are. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna look like, that, that system he has, but he's working on it basically is what I'm getting at. So yes, you will be able to use 3D models like this as maps. Uh, however, you might be noticing, okay, well, the walls are blocking, you know, the map itself. I would need to position the camera like this. Well, that's where the setting backface culling comes into play. So forgive me if I use the wrong terms here. Again, I'm not a 3D model guy, but backface culling, you have two options. And essentially, it's going to take these faces, uh, whether it be on this side or on this side. It determines which one is facing out, and it will render them appropriately. So... For this example, you would want clock up, clockwise. So you can see now if the camera's facing in, it is not rendering these walls right here on the bottom. And so the, your camera would be able to move around these outer positive facing walls or whatever. They would, oops, sorry, I'm zooming in with my mouse. They would not render, right? Counterclockwise just renders the opposite. So it rent, this would render the outside walls only, okay? Which for this case you would not want. Counterclockwise would come in some in handy more for something like this cube. Where is it? There we go. There it is. If you had something like this, right? Clockwise backface calling would it would just render like normal. None renders both the inside and outside, but counterclockwise you would get something like this to where you could just see the inner faces of the cube depending on how your camera is positioned. Does that make sense? I might not have explained it very well, but I feel like the visual example should drive it home for you, okay? Now again, uh, if you were to use a 3D map right now, uh, you would have to set up the floor you'd have to set up these steps you'd have to set up the walls so uh, but he is working on it so it might be worth just waiting for that feature to be added in to fully implement it but um it is very cool that we can have environments like this in rpga and uh yeah you can get some of those those uh great looking ps1 vibes going on 
in your project so hopefully that all makes sense hopefully that was helpful for you guys um i think that's going to do it for this one if you have any other questions feel free to leave them below of course there's character 3d models you can do as well and like with the water wheel the animations will be baked into them and then you just select them from like here from idle or falling or you'd select them or you'd have to set them up in character animations maybe um but yeah, that should at least give you enough info to get started on importing your own 3D models into the program. Again, I'm not a professional modeler. I've tried a couple times with uh, limited success, <laughs> but that's okay. Some of y'all are really good at it. So hopefully this helped. If it did, please be sure to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you haven't picked up your copy of RPGA yet, go ahead and grab it now while it's still on early access and start making your your ps1 n64 style rpgs uh or start getting ready as we uh as we get that 3d map technology fine-tuned <laughs> uh if you've enjoyed my commentary if you enjoyed my tutorials and you would like to support me further please consider doing so at patreon.com slash bit by bit sound as of the recording of this video it is currently metroidvania month over on my patreon and so i'm writing hollow knight style tunes for my supporters and that will come out as a bundle at the end of the month so uh jump in there uh and and get the songs early and then you can also support uh the work i'm doing here so thank you guys so much again for watching you have been amazing i have been bert and i will see you on the next one bye bye